In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Amen. Good morning to everyone joining us at home. I'm offering this Mass for John Owens, and we also remember in our prayers today a friend of mine, Frank Cheatham, whose birthday is remembrance is today. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you call your people to turn away from sin. Lord, have mercy. You teach us wisdom and write your truth in our inmost heart. Christ, have mercy. You forgive sins through the ministry of reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who delight in innocence and restore it, direct the hearts of your servants to yourself, that caught up in the fire of your Spirit, we may be found steadfast in faith and effective in works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord says this, A curse on the man who puts his trust in man, who relies on things of the flesh, whose heart turns from the Lord. He is like dry scrub in the wastelands. If good comes, he has no eyes for it. He settles in the parched places of the wilderness, a salt land uninhabited. A blessing on the man who puts his trust in the Lord, with the Lord for his hope. He is like a tree by the waterside that thrusts its roots to the stream. When the heat comes, it feels no alarm. Its foliage stays green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never ceases to bear fruit. The heart is more devious than any other thing. Perverse, too. Who can pierce its secrets? I, the Lord, search the heart. I probe the loins to give each man what his conduct and actions deserve. The word of the Lord. Response to the psalm, happy the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Happy the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Happy indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor lingers in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of scorners, but whose delight is the law of the Lord, and who ponders his law day and night. Happy the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. He is like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters, that yields its fruit in due season, and whose leaves shall never fade, and all that he does shall prosper. Happy the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Not so are the wicked, not so, for they, like winnowed chaff, shall be driven away by the wind. For the Lord guards the way of the just, but the way of the wicked leads to doom. Happy the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Gospel acclamation. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I will leave this place and go to my Father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, There was a rich man who used to dress in purple and fine linen, and feast magnificent, magnificently every day. And at his gate there lay a poor man called Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to fill himself with the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. Dogs even came and licked his sores. 
Now the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In his torment in Hades, he looked up and saw Abraham a long way off with Lazarus in his bosom. So he cried out, Father Abraham, pity me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. My son, Abraham replied, remember that during your life good things came your way, just as bad things came the way of Lazarus. Now he is being comforted here while you are in agony. But that is not all. Between us and you a great gulf has been fixed to stop anyone if he wanted to, crossing from our side to yours, and to stop any crossing from your side to ours. The rich man replied, Father, I beg you then to send Lazarus to my father's house, since I have five brothers to give them warning so that they do not come to this place of torment too. They have Moses and the prophets, said Abraham. Let them listen to them. Our no father Abraham, said the rich man, but if someone comes to them from the dead, they will repent. Then Abraham said to him, If they will not listen either to Moses or to the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes today it's difficult to know who to trust. Many of our politicians seem less than we would want them to be, and public bodies have had their fair share of difficult times too. The only thing that seems certain nowadays is that everything changes. Social media also makes things more complicated. We're all having to learn to be more discerning where we get our information from. Yet this isn't new. The 6th century before Christ, in which Jeremiah lived, was a similar time of uncertainty. We only hear of it from the perspective of Jeremiah, a prophet who had tremendous influence and who changed many things. But before Jeremiah, Israel had lurched from crisis to crisis. It was only his realisation that the people must turn to God and his wisdom that changed their fortunes. If the people were to put their relationship with the Lord first, then everything else would fall into place. Many people today feel a sense of insecurity about their lives and about the future, particularly in the current circumstances. All the Lord asks us to do in response to those fears is to find a quiet place with him. Because when we're rooted in him, we're on solid ground and we gain a true perspective on our world. And because he is the source of all life, in him we find the love and protection that chases away all fear. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. By this present sacrifice, we pray, O Lord, sanctify our observance, that what Lenten discipline outwardly declares, it may inwardly bring about, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May this sacrifice, O God, remain active in its effects and work ever more strongly within us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Abide with your servants, O Lord, who implore the help of your grace that they may receive from you the support and guidance of your protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for Mass this morning, those of you here in church and those of you at home. I God bless.